And then Logan Crane and Corey Hardman. Right, we are with Eddie Vijo to talk about the matrix and the scoring and the system and so that everybody has a clear understanding how this game works and what makes it so exciting. Great. Eddie? Thanks, Hugo. Okay, so the matrix clay target challenge. Fun game, we'll talk about why. So, first of all, head-to-head -head competition. The person on the left is going to start with what we call the report round. The report round is made up of seven report pairs, starting with the one, two, then the two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight. Those will all be report pairs. In the report round, you get the value of what you break. So one, two is worth three points, one point, two points, so on and so forth till we get to the seven, eight. You get credit for what you break. So as you can see here in the report round, Dalton here, who started off, shot the pair. That's worth three points. When he got to the two, three, he broke the two and dropped the three. That's worth two points. Running total is now five. When he got to the three, four, he broke the pair. That's worth seven points. Added to the five, running total is now 12. So that's how we run all the way down. If he drops a pair, you're going to see here, as he did on the five, six, zero points. His running total would stay at the 16. We would do the same thing for Tony. So Dalton starts off with the 1 2, then Tony shoots the 1 2, move up 2 3, so on and so forth. That's the report round. Then we'll announce the score. So at the end of the report round, 38 34. Now the two shooters are going to switch sides because the person on the left is always going to start on the report in the true round. So Tony would be starting the true pair round, scoring down here. The true pairs are 1, 8, 2, 7, 3, 6, and 4, 5. Same theory, you get credit for what you break. So, Tony, on the 1, 8, dropped the pair, zero points, his running score stays at 34. He also dropped the 2, 7, lost pair. You can see here on the 3, 6, he lost the three, hit the six. That's worth six points. Running total is now 40. Dalton, on the other hand, hit the pair. That's nine points. Running total. Dropped the two, hit the seven. Seven points. Running total. That's how the true round plays out. When they're done with the true round, we make them switch sides again. Score is now 69 for Dalton, 44 for Tony. Now what we do is we move into the double down round. This is really where the excitement starts to kick in. So the person who's in the lead at that point, which for us was Dalton, is gonna start off the double down round. He has to select a report pair. The person who's in the lead as we move through the double down round always has to pick a report pair. They cannot pick a true pair or double down. So now this is, this is not the it's a perfect example, but I'll explain how it would be different. Dalton picked the 7-8 report. He dropped the 8. At this point, what I'm writing up here is what they select. Different than up here where I'm writing up the actual point total that they hit. When we get to the double down round, I write down what they actually select. Dalton selected the 7-8 report. He missed the 8, hit the 7. His running total moves to 76. He, at that time, Tony actually picked a double down. Now what the double down means is the person who's following has a couple options. After the leader 
shoots their report pair. The person who's behind can select the report pair of their choice, or they can choose to double down. The double down means they're going to shoot the same pair as the leader selected. They have to do that as a true pair. If they hit that pair, they get double the point value. So instead of being worth 15 points, it's going to be worth 30 points. Big swing in numbers right there if they hit it. Risk reward. The risk is if you miss either of those targets, you get zero points. So big reward, but also a big risk if you miss the pair. So in this case, Tony selected to double down, try to get up to possible 74 for a score with the 30 points. He missed one of the targets or both. Either way, no points. So he stays at 44. Dalton selected the 7-8 report again. He dropped the 7, hit the 8. That moved him to 84. Tony again tried to double down the true pair. He missed, stayed at 44 points. At this point, Dalton changed his strategy a little bit, and he selected the 5-6 report. He hit the 6, moved him to 90. Tony chose not to double down again because he got hurt here on both of these selected his own report pair, that being the 2-7, and he got the nine points. So that's how that plays out. That's, that's what you're seeing on the scoreboard. Now strategy-wise, the excitement happens as these, if these leads change, right? If Tony, would have, if Tony would have hit a couple of these double downs, it would have put him in the lead, and now he's selecting the report pair and now Dalton has the opportunity to double down. So the risk reward shifts as the leadership. So you can see some dramatic lead changes in these last four double down pairs, um, as long as you're hitting those pairs. So that's the key, like any other shooting game, is to hit as many targets as you can. But the real excitement happens in this double down round when you have the opportunity to double your point value, or really, get significantly behind if you're not hitting those targets. The one thing I will say is a question that always comes up is, well, what happens if you're always in the lead and you never get to double down? How do you, how do you score high enough? Well, then it's really just about hitting your targets, right? Theoretically, if you ran all of this out, you were in the lead and never got a chance to double down, but you selected, say, the 7-8 report every time, you're going to shoot about a 159 score that's going to get you in any kind of shoot-off that ever happens. That's a really, really high score. So if you're shooting great, even if you miss a couple of your early targets that were worth low point values, you're going to end up with a pretty high score. So you can shoot great, still get in any kind of shoot-off or money round that is coming out of this. Um, but if you're not and you hit some double downs, even as the the, the the, the shooter who's not in the lead, you have a real opportunity to get yourself back in the lead and still shoot a really good score with the double down. So that's the game. The strategy comes in those last four pairs because if you're in the lead, uh, you may have a tendency to want to shoot a low pair, thinking that, hey, if the guy behind me doubles down, he's not going to get many points out of it. Well, that works to a point. Let's say Dalton's in the lead and he says, I don't want him to catch up to me, and he picks a 1-2 report, thinking that if Tony doubles down, it's still only worth six points if he hits it. Well, that's fine, but Tony still has the opportunity to pick a different report pair if he wants, and he would probably pick the 7-8 because it's worth 15 points. You hit your 1-2 report, that's three points for you. Tony comes back and says, okay, well, I'll pick the 7-8 report. That's 15 points. That's still a 12-point swing and you get three or four of those, you still may be back in the game. So you got to be a little strategic, whether you're the leader or the follower, as to how the math may work out. So that adds a lot of excitement factor to this game, in addition to just trying to run up as much as you can. My yeah. advice is if you're not shooting great, if you're going to miss, you want to miss early where the point value is low. You don't want to start missing these high point report pairs or true pairs. So the value of the target kind of indicates the level of the target? Uh, great question, Hugo. So yes, that yes and no. Um, in general, yes, because as we move through from the one target to the eight target, the targets get further. 
So that changes the difficulty level. I will say the five and six, the way this game is set up, the five and six are fairly long crossers. And in my opinion, having run the game several times, I believe the five and the six are harder targets to hit consistently than the seven, eight, even though the seven and eight are farther out there, you get a chance to see them a little bit better. You can watch them a little more because they're higher up in the sky. Those crossers are challenging when they're out there at, you know, 40, 45 yards. So, but in general, yes, the, the difficulty level goes up as the target number goes up. Uh, the other thing I'll say that's nice about the game is all the odd numbers are on the left. All the even numbers are on the right. The targets are basically mirror images of each other, um, with the exception of a few little speed tweaks or height tweaks. They're basically mirror images of each other. So you can really kind of predict what you want to shoot when and where. And the other nice thing is the way the game is set up, uh, there's banners or flags out there, and the numbers are really easy to see versus the old style where you might have some small number by the machine. Out here, you can really see the numbers well. You really know what you're looking for, what you're shooting at, um, and it just makes the game uh, a little more, not only shooter friendly, but a little more uh, spectator friendly when they're trying to see what's, what's being called and what's being shot at. Perfect. Thank you very much, Eddie. I appreciate it. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy the game. <laughs>